Hi everybody, this is the first lecture in a series of lectures called Oncology Made Easy presented by me, Mazin Judy, Assistant Professor in the Baghdad Medical College. This series of lectures will discuss many, multiple oncology problems with their uh, surgical and medical management. In this lecture, we'll start in this lecture with the uh, problems of breast cancer stage 0, which is uh, inside to breast cancer. When there is mass in the breast, we have to do hist after history, we have to do physical examination and then we have to use imaging tests for diagnosis of this mass, whether it carries risk of malignancy or not. And the, the, the test of imaging, it is either ultrasound or mammography. If the age of the patient below 30 years, better to use ultrasonography. While if the, if the age is more than 40 years, we have to do uh, bilateral mammography. And then if the diagnosis was in situ cancer, we have to do a very important stage, which is the pathology review. Pathology review is very important step in the diagnosis of carcinoma in situ. And if the carcinoma in situ was lobular, we have possibilities. This lobular may be classical type of lobular carcinoma in situ. That is to say there are no features of suspicion of being ductal or suspicion of invasion. And the features are similar to these features seen by imaging tests. In this condition, we can uh, follow up the patient only by observation by surveillance. While if the features of the malignancy carcinoma in situ with biomorphic features, biomorphic that is to say are uh, different cells, different in size and shape, and may be similar to the features of ductal carcinoma in situ, or if the mass showing uh, features similar, not similar to the imaging test. That's to say, the features are not concordant with the imaging. In these two conditions, we have to do surgical excision. This surgical excision of the mass will be followed by possibility of being classical type of carcinoma in situ as lobular carcinoma in situ, or maybe ductal carcinoma in situ, or maybe invasive. And if the classical features of carcinoma in situ as lobular carcinoma in situ, only surveillance is enough. While if the features are as ductal carcinoma in situ, now we have specific workup and management for the ductal carcinoma in situ. If the features of lobular carcinoma with invasion, in this condition we have to do uh, workup and management specific for invasive cancer, as any breast cancer that is invasive. So. When there is diagnosis of lobular carcinoma in situ by tool cut biopsy, we have to do pathology review first, and then uh, we have to find these features if they are classical type of lobular carcinoma in situ or biomorphic features. If there's biomorphic features or the features are not concordant with the imaging test, now we have to do excision. Otherwise, just observation enough. While if the features of the mass showing uh, ductal carcinoma in situ, now the management is different. Ductal carcinoma in situ previously uh, was low incidence, but uh, at the last years, increased the incidence of ductal carcinoma in situ because of the increased the use of early detection of the malignancy by the uh, use of the mammography. Now, cancer specific survival for women diagnosed with ductal carcinoma in situ exceeds the 95% regardless of the type of the local therapy employed and the treatment as local surgical treatment for the ductal carcinoma in situ include three different uh, methods whether mastectomy or whether excision and radiotherapy or whether excision alone now if uh, diagnosis is ductal carcinoma in situ of course the the TNM staging is TIS, which is carcinoma in situ, N0, M0. It will be followed by workup, which is history, physical examination, diagnostic bilateral mammography to detect any other ones in the contralateral breast. Pathology review, again, here is very important. We have to concentrate on pathology review because uh, local invasion may be missed by the pathologists, and if there is local invasion, there will be invasive cancer rather than carcinoma in situ. 
Also, determination of the tumor estrogen receptors is important here in the amino the immunohistochemistry for that class no one side will include ER only. There is no benefit for the use of the HER2 receptor. Also, we have to do genetic counseling if the patient is high risk. That's to say the patient has uh, other family member or the patient is young age. We have to do genetic counseling for detection of any a gene mutation like BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation. Breast MRI, as indicated, breast MRI is important in certain points regarding the uh, breast cancer. We'll discuss later on in further lectures. If there is diagnosis of tactile carcinoma in situ, we have to do now lumpectomy without lymph node surgery. Uh, this is also with what? With whole breast radiation therapy, and this is category one, which is the preferred, uh, preferred way of management according to the NCCN guideline, National Cancer Comprehensive Network, which is the oncology guideline, with or without boost to the tumor bed. So the best treatment for ductal carcinoma in situ is surgical removal of the lump, which is lumpectomy, without lymph node surgery, and with whole breast radiation. Unfortunately, we find many surgeries associated with lymph node dissection, which is, which is not preferred for patients with ductal carcinoma in situ because of the incidence, low, very low incidence for the, uh, invasion, for the involvement of the lymph node because it is non invasive by its character, it is non invasive, it is ductal carcinoma in situ. The other way of surgical management for patients with uh, ductal carcinoma in situ is what is total mastectomy with or without sentinel lymph node biopsy, with reconstruction, which is optional. So the other way of management of ductal carcinoma in situ is what is surgical removal of the whole breast, which is the total mastectomy. The other way of management also lumpectomy without lymph node surgery, without radiation therapy, and this carries category 2B, which is not preferred in the treatment of ductal carcinoma in situ, and category 2B carries not preferred for any uh, tumor according to the oncology guideline. So the preferred management for ductal carcinoma in situ, this which is in the red box, which is lumpectomy without lymph node dissection, but with whole breast radiation. The appropriate therapy for rheumatoid ductal carcinoma in situ depends on specific features. First of all is the extent of the, of the ductal carcinoma in situ lesion. The other thing is the risk of local recurrence with each form of ductal carcinoma in situ lesion. The other thing also the patient attitude toward the risk and benefit treatment of a particular therapy. So these three points will depend on it for the choice of the proper surgical treatment for a patient with ductal carcinoma in situ. The extent of ductal carcinoma in situ is most accurately estimated preoperatively with the use of what? Of magnification mammography. This is the first point. We depend it on the diagnosis and the uh, and management of the ductal carcinoma in situ is mammography, especially the magnification mammography to find the, the extent of the ductal carcinoma in situ. Studies indicate MRI both overestimate overestimate and underestimate the size of the ductal carcinoma in situ lesion MRI actually in the breast management has specific indications and the use for the ductal carcinoma in situ may give false idea by overestimation of the mass and uh, and this will uh, result in the choice of mastectomy while the patient may be treated only by lumpectomy and without lymph node dissection. So the MRI does not improve the surgical planning when compared with diagnostic mammography and does not decrease the rate of epsilateral breast tumor recurrence. The total or simple mastectomy curative is approximately 98% of the patient, regardless of the age, ductal carcinoma presentation, the size, or the grade. Mastectomy without lymph node dissection associated with risk of recurrence less than 1%. We find here there is mastectomy without lymph node dissection. 
you have to concentrate on lymph node there is no lymph node dissection with the management of uh, ductal carcinoma in situ excision of the mass only that is lymph that is lumpectomy without radiotherapy associated with 15 to 50 percent risk of recurrence here we conclude that radiotherapy is very important step if there is lumpectomy alone should be followed by whole breast radiation with radiotherapy that is whole breast radiation associated with 6 to 16 percent uh, risk of recurrence and the radiotherapy oncology group study when uh, about uh, 10,000 or 9,800 patient recurrence rate found 6.7 percent in observation arm and 0.9 percent in radiotherapy arm so now we find that the whole breast irradiation is very important to decrease the risk of recurrence in patients with lumpectomy and the management of uh, ductal carcinoma in situ. The treatment of axilla and ductal carcinoma in situ is very important issue. In situ car carcinoma, by definition, by definition does not metastasize. So theoretically, axillary staging should be unnecessary for a ductal carcinoma in situ. That is to say, lymph node dissection is not an important step in the management of ductal carcinoma in situ. 1 to 2% of patients, presumably due to unrecognized microinvasion. So the risk of microinvasion in 1 to 2% of patients with ductal carcinoma in situ. And as I was said before, a pathology review is very, very important step in the diagnosis of ductal carcinoma in situ. Patients who receive mastectomy for ductal carcinoma in situ should undergo sentinel, sentinel lymph node. Here it's very important to do sentinel lymph node because if, the, if we remove the breast, whole breast, we will not have an, an area to do sentinel lymph node. Now, the endocrine therapy is also an important step in the management of ductal carcinoma in situ because ER receptor, positivity of ER receptors is present about 80% of ductal carcinoma in situ lesion and is more frequent in non comido than comido ductal carcinoma in situ. These uh, terms regarding the pathological features, histopathological features in ductal carcinoma in situ. It is found more common in non comido type of ductal carcinoma in situ. And the, the benefit of uh, use of endocrine therapy to prevent the recurrence in the, in the other breast is documented by many studies. One of them is uh, NASAP study, which is National Surgical uh, Adjuvant Breast and Bowel and Breast Study B24 trial found that there is the use of uh, endocrine therapy as tamoxifene give good result and fantastic result to prevent the recurrence in the other breast and in the same breast of course there was no benefit here important point there is no benefit seen in ductal carcinoma on site to lesion when the ER is negative of course we have to have the positivity of endocrine receptors for the use of endocrine therapy the addition of tamoxifene to radiotherapy in young patients is very important in, the, in those patients who are ER positive ductal carcinoma in situ, in whom the risk of local recurrence, that's to say in the young patient, is higher and the toxicity of tamoxifene is less than older patients, as tamoxifene may be disposed to thromboembolism and other complications. This is from the NCSN guideline showing that the importance of the use and uh, the, in the, the endocrine therapy in the ER positive patient. So consider endocrine therapy for five years for a patient treated with a breast conserving therapy, that is to say lumpectomy, and the radiation therapy, it is the preferred choice, category one. Category one to use the endocrine therapy for how long? For five years, especially for those with ER positive ductal carcinoma in situ. And the endocrine therapy, tamoxifene for premenopausal patient, or the use of tamoxifene or aromatase inhibitors, which are the letrozole and estrozole, which are the Armidex and the Femara as uh, trade names, when they are used for all patients that are postmenopausal patients. 
Of course, this also can be used for pre-menopausal patients with the use of specific other drug, which is called LHRH agonist. Then, the follow-up of the patient by interval history and physical examination every 6 to 12 months for 5 years and then annually. And the use of mammography uh, every 1 year for a patient treated with uh, lumpectomy and whole breast radiation or any other type of treatment. If treatment intercurrent therapy should be monitored by a specific uh, way of uh, observation will be discussed later on in the following lectures. Thank you.